Today I want to show you a video of a combined cataract extraction and ab interno canaloplasty, uh, sometimes also called ab interno visco canalostomy. Uh, this is a patient with granulomatosis with polyangitis. Uh, he had a visually significant cataract in this eye and medically uncontrolled glaucoma. In his fellow eye, uh, he had undergone retinal detachment repair given his uh, high myopia and a tube shunt implantation, which was complicated by uh, recurrent uh, erosions. As such, we decided to try a ab interno uh, canal-based procedure prior to going forward with more traditional filtering surgery. Here you can see as we're finishing up the uh, cataract extraction, given his high myopia, there's a lot of redundancy and uh, floppiness of the capsular bag, uh, which is somewhat uh, disconcerting as we're removing the last bit of cortex. And so we make uh, the decision uh, to insert a capsular tension ring, which you see here. These are the preloaded capsular tension rings that come out to the right or to the left. In this case, given the uh, diffuse floppiness or excessive uh, capsular bag, the direction does not matter. We finish inserting it here and uh, once we're able to do that, you can see that the lens uh, centers nicely and remains quite stable. Uh, we then inject uh, myostat uh, to bring down uh, the pupil and uh, begin the ab internal canaloplasty. I'm here making a oblique uh, paracentesis directed towards the nasal angle uh, that is uh, superior to allow easier assistance from my staff. I then rotate the head away from me while I rotate the microscope oculars towards me to better visualize the nasal angle structures. And here I'm using a, a gonial prism to visualize and confirm uh, that I can uh, see the angle structures. I then enter with a MVR blade, again uh, inserting it and bringing it across the anterior chamber before I place my gonio prism. And then I begin to create a uh, 1 to 2 clock hour uh, goniotomy nasally. Uh, when you're performing this step, it's almost all by visual cues. There's very little in the way of uh, tissue feedback. In fact, if you're getting a lot of feedback or resistance, uh, it indicates that you're likely too deep and, and uh, hitting the uh, posterior wall of uh, Schlem's canal, which of course is sclera. Now once I create uh, the goniotomy, I like to just very gently uh, press on the uh, inferior lip of the Schlem's canal to ensure it is open. We then take this uh, illuminated uh, microcatheter, which contains within it a small uh, lumen, uh, which allows us to later inject uh, viscoelastic into Schlem's canal. You can see that I begin uh, directing this illuminated microcatheter into Schlem's canal, and I want you to pay attention to the angulation uh, outside the eye. Um, I'm getting a lot of resistance to going uh, within the goniotomy, and I notice that it's deflected upwards. It's not in the same orientation as my original uh, paracentesis, and so I ask my assistant to uh, bring it down towards me so that it's following the same tract, uh, and then I'm able to advance it much more easily. We skip ahead here and you can see that this uh, catheter has traveled 360 degrees. We then rotate the eye so that it's facing forward again and uh, irrigate uh, the dispersive viscoelastic from the surface of the eye to get a clearer view. And then we slowly begin to retract uh, this illuminated microcatheter, stopping every uh, clock hour or so and I say click, and uh, my assistant injects a small aliquot of viscoelastic. And uh, so you can see we're making our way around here. And there you can see there's uh, a marked blanching of the episcleral vessels, which is indicative of a uh, patent collector channel network, uh, and is thought to be a good prognostic indicator of uh, success for canal-based uh, procedures. And so we continue to go around and you can see that uh, the episcleral vessels uh, around the limbus continue to blanch as we go around. And again, every time I stop, every clock hour, I, I ask the assistant to click and inject a little bit more viscoelastic. 
And ultimately, you can see that we end up getting prominent episcleral blanching for about 270 degrees. Now, this is uh, different from the GAT procedure in which we would have simply grasped uh, both ends and lysed it through the tissue. In this patient who is uh, essentially monocular, we did not want to take the chance of having a, a significant hyphema, which uh, would interfere significantly with his activities of daily living, and so that's why we chose to uh, perform the abinternal canaloplasty, which has a smaller goniotomy and therefore um, is thought to have less uh, risk of hyphema. And once we hydrate here, you can see that, um, or at least I could see that, uh, there was less uh, hyphema uh, than that which I'm accustomed with GAT. And again, we leave the intraocular pressure in the high teens. Thanks for watching. Good luck.